Hey, what is up guys? Tim DeSaint here. Hope you're all having a beautiful day. And today we're talking about 10 style tips that I've learned so far in my 20s. And I'm not, I'm not 30 yet, by the way, but I am getting a little bit older. I'm gonna be 27 soon. And I have to say my style has evolved quite a lot since my early 20s. And I can definitely point to a couple of key elements that I think have been instrumental in developing my style to where it is today. So I've narrowed it down to the 10 most important ones. Let's get into it. Thank you to Everlane for sponsoring today's video. If you're a fan of the channel, you've probably seen me rocking their pieces quite often. Everlane makes high quality basics that are designed to stand the test of time. My personal favorites are the relaxed premium weight t-shirt for an all around great oversized tee, the modern fit chinos, which have a nice relaxed cut and the right amount of stretch to be super comfortable all day long. And of course, their bomber jacket, classic staple menswear piece. I'm just not sure they have the olive green colorway right now, but they do have a wide range of other available colors. I will link to my personal go-tos from Everlane in the description. Tip number one, experiment with an open mind. Especially at the beginning when you're first getting into fashion and really starting to discover yourself and what your style truly is, you don't want to pigeonhole yourself into one particular style from the get. I think it's always a good idea to keep an open mind, experiment with different things, take inspiration from all kinds of different areas, different people, and people with different styles. Really try to be intentional about stepping out of your comfort zone, trying things that you've never tried, trying things that initially you might not think will look good on you, because honestly, you might be pleasantly surprised. So one thing that I like to do, for example, is when I walk into a store, when, when it's not COVID times, obviously, I used to go to stores maybe a little more often than right now, I would try everything. So I would pick out anything that kind of grabs my attention, take it with me, go into the cabin and try it on. So I would try that jacket in a color that I've never worn before. I would try that statement piece, that little funky pattern. I would go into the women's section, try pants or jackets there. And really, I have to say, that's been a huge help in developing my style. Number two, build slowly. So you've watched a couple of fashion YouTubers here and there. You followed some Instagrammers whose style you like. That's not when you want to completely revamp your wardrobe, set a huge budget and just change up the whole thing in one go. Because that's when you end up regretting things that you buy. You get a little too overzealous, a little bit too excited and get things that maybe aren't really going to be your style in two, three years time and only really just reflected that impulse in the moment desire. So for example, let's say you're interested in trying out a rocker look. Don't just re vamp your wardrobe and go for the leather jacket, the denim jacket, the distressed jeans, all the chains and all the bangs in one go. Maybe just try one leather biker jacket or something, see how you feel in it, wear it for a bit, and then decide if you want to expand further into that style. Number three, invest in quality. Because here's the thing with quality pieces. In the long run, if it's properly priced, it's not actually more expensive. Let's say you buy a really high quality cotton $30 t-shirt, you take care of it properly, it might last you a couple of years, whereas if you buy a low quality white t-shirt from Primark for like three or four bucks, that's gonna get worn out really quickly and you're gonna have to change it so many times, it might actually be more expensive in the end than that one high quality t-shirt. So once you've found those staple pieces of your wardrobe that you know you'll be wearing a lot, think about investing in higher quality for those core pieces. I'm the type of person that once I find something I like, something that fits me well and feels authentic to me, I just stick to those staples. For example, for my oversized tees, I found ones that are perfect for me from Everlane last year. And ever since, I just stick to these. I know the quality is there. They've all aged super well after many, many washes and the fit is still the same. Number four, create mood boards. I find mood boards to be so helpful. I like to make mine directly on Instagram, on the app, because I follow a lot of other fashion bloggers on there. So whenever you like a photo, you like an outfit, you can just save that to your collection and create your mini collections inside there. And what you're gonna find out over time, once you save, once you save 40, 50 different photos, usually you're gonna find some sort of recurring pattern and common themes between all of the outfits. So you're obviously gravitating more towards certain things, so you might wanna experiment with those. I mean, fashion is very visual, so I find that having those mood boards really helps in becoming more aware of the things you like, the things you don't like, and really honing down on those things that you gravitate towards and further develop your style. 
Number five, get inspired from women's fashion too. Guys, I cannot stress enough how much value, how much inspo you can get from looking at women's fashion. I personally get so much of my inspiration from it. And that doesn't mean you have to wear a skirt, by the way, although you can if you want to, obviously. I think people should wear whatever the hell they want to wear. But there's actually a lot in women's fashion that you can translate into men's fashion. So let's say, for example, you see a fashion blogger on Instagram wearing maybe some wide trousers with a cropped top, maybe a blazer on top and some chunky jewelry. You can actually get inspired from the silhouette of the outfit, maybe from the colors as well, if you like how the color palette goes together, and then recreate that into your own style and make your own outfit around it. So you can still go, for example, for wide trousers. Maybe you go for a t-shirt that's tucked in and a little bit of a shorter jacket and then add a cool chunky necklace on top. That can look really cool. So don't restrict yourself to only taking inspiration from other men because the women can definitely teach us a lesson or two. And I'll put some recommendations in the description of my favorite women's fashion YouTubers and Instagrammers. Number six, ask yourself, what is your signature style? If you look at any of the greatest style icons, they always have a thing that makes their style unique to them. Like when you think of Anna Wintour, for example, you picture the sunglasses, probably a dress and some chunky jewelry around her neck. If you think Tom Ford, you probably think super well-tailored black suits with a crisp white shirt. So as you get more advanced and have a better understanding of your style, try to think, what is my signature? Like, do I have a signature look? Do I have a signature piece that I often like to wear? It could be that you like to wear a lot of leather jackets or maybe you just wear a lot of Chelsea boots or you always have a white t-shirt on or some funky pattern trousers. Try to pick out that one thing that makes your style you. Here's a fun exercise that I like to do. So imagine if you were to die tomorrow, I know it's a little grim, but stick with me here. If you were to die tomorrow and you could pick out the one outfit that you're gonna go to the grave with, and that's gonna be your one ghost outfit that you're gonna have to wear forever, what would it be? For me, it would probably be a white t-shirt tucked into some tailored trousers and a really cool overcoat. So what is it for you? What is your signature look? Comment down below. Number seven, put words to your style. Practice that, like pull out a sheet of paper and try to describe your style in three to seven words. At some point, I think you should know yourself and know your style enough to be able to do that rather easily. Is it classic? Is it modern? Is it tailored, more streetwear, maybe more casual or maybe more sophisticated? So try to actually narrow it down to specific words. I think it can be a great exercise to do and can really help you become more aware of what your style actually is and help you become more focused and more intense intentional with your future purchases. Number eight, don't follow trends blindly, but do pay attention to them. Yes, I said that. I know it can be a little bit controversial, but stick with me here. Obviously, you don't want to just hop on the latest trends every year and just wear that and then throw it out when you're done. That's not only horrible for your environment, it's going to be pretty horrible for your wallet as well. And you're just going to be very confused and your style isn't going to have any identity to it. But at the same time, I do think there is something to be said for actually paying attention to trends, seeing what's in, what's modern right now, what's trending, and generally asking yourself, do I like this? Do I not like this? I'm sure any given year, there can be a lot of trends that may not really suit your style, but sometimes you can find one or two trends that can actually integrate very well into your style and feel authentic to you. Fashion is constantly evolving. There's new things always coming up and also it's quite circular. So a lot of things that were popular 10, 20 years back are actually coming back in style today. And not all trends fade that quickly either. For example, oversized silhouettes have been trending for a couple of years now, and I'm pretty sure are gonna be trending for the next couple of years. As you've seen, I personally really enjoy playing around with the more relaxed oversized silhouettes, and I'm getting more into that kind of style today. And it's not always oversized. Sometimes it's slim, sometimes it's a mix, going with a, a slimmer top and wider trousers, or the opposite, going with a more oversized jacket. But what I'm trying to say is, if something is trending, but you actually like it and is authentic to yourself, don't don't be afraid to experiment with that and add it to your style toolkit. Number nine, accessories make your outfit. I cannot stress this enough. It's like having an amazing hamburger, but without the sauce or having wine without cheese. I know I'm French, but you get what I mean. So do experiment with accessories if you haven't been doing so already. And there are many different kinds of accessories, by the way, like that does not at all mean that you need to buy chunky jewelry or wear rings or any of that. 
Maybe you might just enjoy a simple, minimal watch and not have anything else. Maybe you're more into scarves and like wearing like statement scarves with cool patterns on them. Or maybe you like silver jewelry or gold jewelry and, and you enjoy wearing three or four rings on your hands. Try to find the accessories that speak to you the most and that feel authentic to you and experiment with that. And finally, number 10. And I honestly think this might be the most valuable tip. Don't try too hard to match. That's something I learned more recently in the past couple of years. You don't want your outfits to be too perfect. If everything is color matched exactly, like you have your red socks and the red scarf and the red bracelet for your watch, like it becomes a little bit too much, a little bit too try hard. You want that Italian sprezzatura, that French casual chic, like you want to make it more nonchalant because if you're too matchy-matchy, it just looks too forced. So maybe try having just one thing in your outfit that doesn't exactly match the rest, but having that imperfection actually makes the outfit better. It's okay if the colors don't match perfectly or if the fabrics aren't exactly the same. In some cases, when done tastefully, I think it can even make the look more interesting. So these are the 10 things that I've learned as my style evolved throughout my 20s. Hopefully some of these help you guys as well in better understanding and further developing your own style. Let me know in the comments which of these tips you found the most helpful. And thanks again to Everlane for sponsoring today's video. They've got loads of cool pieces for fall winter. I'll link to some of my personal favorites that I've tried in the description below. And on that note, I wish you a beautiful day, evening, afternoon, wherever you are in the world, guys. And I'll see you in the next video. Peace. Carriage. Whoa. <laughs> for me, it would probably wear, for me, it would, for me, it would probably be, ah, blah, fucking hell. I can say anything I want, it's my channel. Yeah, yeah, I can say Primark is complete shit, yeah, it's cool. Yeah, yeah, Uniqlo is trash, I'm no, just kidding, yeah. just kidding.